In my recent review of the Audient ID24, I did a little section about what loopback is, and it was brief. Far too brief, in fact, to really go into what it's capable of. So I wanted to take a step back and give loopback the attention it deserves, and we'll go through uh, what is loopback, I'll show you why it's not as complicated as you might think, and then we'll talk about um, how to use it. For the latter, I've got three use cases to show you, but you know, this is just kind of scratching the surface. And of course, if you haven't seen my review of the Audient ID24, um, that will be linked. I highly recommend watching that as well. You'll find everything timestamped in this video and uh, any kind of likes, comments, subs if you're not already are greatly appreciated. I also have a Patreon for anyone who wants to support the channel. I regularly give away gear and that kind of thing on that. Let's dive in. So starting with what loopback actually is, think of it as an invisible cable inside your interface. It grabs audio from any source within your computer like YouTube or Spotify, Zoom calls and the like, and sends it back to your recording software like it was a normal input. You don't need extra gear or complicated software, you just set it up once, hit record, and then your audio is routed straight back into your DAW. Let me show you. To set up your interface, you'll need to probably open up the software that goes with it, and you may have to look up how to set it up. You can see I've got some audio coming through playback one and two, so I'm gonna go down and set my loopback source to playback one and two. Then in my DAW, I need to make sure that my loopback track is stereo, and then select in seven and eight, because I know that everything loopback happens on seven and eight. Like I said, if you're not sure, just give it a quick Google. This information should be really readily available for your interface. And here's our first example. And all I really wanna do is to show you that I can do almost anything on my computer and have a voiceover running at the same time. And uh, my DAW is going to capture uh, all of the audio. You can see in my DAW, I've got my mic track, which is recording. And then I've got my loopback track, which is recording as well. Note that both of them are muted, because if you have your mic track unmuted, that will feed into the loopback. And if you have your loopback unmuted, it will loop. It will loop and sound horrible. Um, so try and avoid that. Anyway, here we go. I've got this, uh, I've got one of my videos because I thought, you know, I don't want to raise any flags from music that I shouldn't be playing. So let's just play it. Then we have the Warm Audio WA47 and Clone of... Of course, I can just talk and I can dip the background uh, audio to make this more uh, possible. If you're not careful. You also get a little... And I can just pause and comment on it, that kind of thing. You can imagine um, how easy this is for, you know, for making content. Let's just give an example. Um, I'll hit play again. Classy sounding treble roll off. I definitely want to try this in Omni mode as well. As the and it's funny, during this video, that microphone was kind of the king of, uh, well, the biggest surprise any of the uh, of the, the shootout that I did. And um, yeah, I recommend watching that video as well. Example number two, and you can see I have a guitar. What I'm gonna do is actually play some guitar through this uh, Neural DSP desktop version of this uh, amp sim, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna print it into my DAW instead of recording a DI signal and then placing an instance of this on every track, which obviously takes up a lot of DSP. Yes, there's less you can do to tweak your sound in post, but, you know, I like the confidence and um, it works kind of perfectly. I can just play and I can even play something and then reduce the sound of it, you know, duck it down so I can play over the top. Or something better. Anyway, it's just another possibility, you know, this is a way that you can really use uh, these quite powerful plugins as uh, more like actual recording actual guitar amps and um, it's really cool. Uh, you know, I know this is not gonna to apply to um, all of you guys, but um, just think of the possibilities. Okay, it's another day and um, I've got my audio set up. You can see in my session, I've got two tracks. I've got my microphone and I've got a loop back track and we're gonna make a call. Let's call my dad. Why not? Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's hard can't see you. <laughs> I can't see you. You can't see me. Okay, hold on. How's that? 
That's it. You see. So there we go. Um, hopefully you're hearing everything. You're hearing my mic. You're hearing the video call. Um, I just need some dialogue from you. Um, my my dad is a massive um, Fuji fan, and I don't know. I don't know if you've seen the prices. They're getting outrageous. Why are they so expensive? You're the person to answer that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um. It, it, the second-hand market has gone really well. I mean, it's basically influencers, and also um, they are—they don't produce a lot of them, so they become desirable. Yeah. But it's influencers. They're just a trendy camera to own, isn't it? So yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> for us people that have been owning them since the XT1, you know, it's just par for the course because it—it uh, it means that when I sell a second-hand camera always get a good price for it yeah, that's true yeah well thanks for helping me out it's a really quick okay. call i'll talk to you yeah. later <laughs> there Take we have you. it if you're thinking well why would i do it this way when you know i could just hit record on teams and it would just capture all the audio and the reason is that you can split out the audio and process them separately and that's exactly what i did in this example i cleaned up my dad's vocal track whilst using all of the normal tools that i use on my voice Anyway, now I just wanted to sum up my thoughts and uh, we'll answer the three questions from the beginning. Firstly, what is loopback? Well, put simply, it lets you record whatever your computer is playing straight into your software, no extra gear or setup needed. Secondly, why it's not as complicated as it sounds? Well, that's true because it's already built into many interfaces. You just need to set it up once and then start using it. And the more you use it, the more natural it feels and quickly it becomes just part of your everyday workflow. The how to use it I've already covered in the three examples, but the possibilities really are endless. For example, you can imagine the advantages when it comes to using streaming software like OBS. Super useful, loopback, absolutely rules. Anyway, that's it for now. I have loved making this video for you as ever. I just hope you found it interesting and helpful. My question of the day is how do you use loopback in your software? Um, I'm interested in just seeing as many use cases as possible in the comments and um, I read your comments so I'll see you down there. I've now made hundreds of videos for YouTube uh, so on my channel there's so much to get your teeth into. You can subscribe here and this video I highly recommend watching next. You will love it, I guarantee. See you next time.